in this video get your van ready for winter <coughs> In this short video everyone we're going to discuss how to winterize your van now it's currently autumn whilst we're sitting in this van today and it's quite breezy outside if we're not going to be using our van now obviously the temperatures are going to be dropping then there are certain things that we need to be doing now we're not saying personally that we're not going to use our van during winter but we thought we'd show you all what we do to get our van winter prepped as we call it so the first one i guess is fresh water fresh water right so what we need to do first is to drain the system down there's a big white tank underneath my bottom that has holds 300 litres of water for this van so what you can do and we'll probably show you in the video somewhere is there's a valve in there and you can open one valve and it will let all the water out to about 20 litres or there's another valve which you can open which will lead the whole 100 litres out I need a wee now. So then what you want to do is make sure there's no water in your pipe work. So you need to open your taps, both the bathroom tap, the shower and the kitchen sink. And put or, the pump on. And of course you do need to put the pump on to do that part. And then drain down your grey water so that any frost won't burst any of your pipe. Also of course when you've dumped all that lovely fresh water, which seems a bit of a waste, from the main tank we need to be making sure as fran has said that the grey water tank has also been drained down in in a, in a environmentally friendly way of course uh, and then we need to check that dreaded blue tap now because the temperature is already quite low when as of today when we're filming this our frost protection valve has automatically clicked open which is good because it proves it works uh, if it hasn't clicked open you need to open it and i'll put a little inset into the video now to remind you if you've not seen our previous videos on how to do that basically that frost protection valve is going to dump the maximum of 10 liters that the heater the boiler system holds to protect the system from freezing over the autumn and winter months that's it for water i think the next one on the list is the fridge now this is not in necessarily any particular order but we'll do the fridge next of course we make sure that the fridge is empty we give it a clean and then the most important things to do of course is to leave both the fridge door and the, and the compartment drawer that's below it open why do we do this well of course it's to allow the air to circulate around it but that isn't everything that we do with the fridge we also have some frost protection covers they're just like simple plastic covers i'll put a little bit of inset video in again into the video now and these fit behind the fridge vent covers that are on the outside of the van now i've read on many posts on forums about so many people that don't bother with these they've never used them they've never had a problem that's fine we do it because we're told that's the best thing for the fridge and to protect the van at the end of the day we pay a lot of money for these vans so although these covers are around £25 each, and of course we need two of them because there's two, vi two vents on the side of the van, we think it's a worthwhile thing. Now, if you're not laying up the van and you're using the van during the autumn and winter, they come in handy for that because I am told that when it gets to below 8 degrees, the fridge will run more efficiently if you have these covers on. So as far as we're concerned, we would definitely recommend putting these covers behind the fridge vents. That's an easy one make sure you turn your gas off of course make sure that you don't leave the gas on the next one is the fetford toilet cassette now of course there's two options with this but the main thing is to make sure is that it's all nice clean and empty you don't want any fluids in there whatsoever we actually take our toilet cassette home with us and i put it in the garage because of course the van is in storage so i keep it home in the garage and whilst it's there, I find it's a good opportunity to just give it a bit of a lubrication. No, ca no carry on jokes there today. Uh, using the stuff that I'll put on screen now, which is available in our Amazon storefront shop. Link is always in the video description below. Number five. Still can't read my writing. No. <laughs> Remove all items from ah, the van. Yes. Removing all the items from the van. Including ourselves, because I think this is going to get rather parky in here during the autumn and winter. Oh, definitely. Number well, six. Clean the van. 
Now, that's not deliberately yours to say because you're a lady <laughs> and therefore you clean the van. No. I'm more than happy to do no. the cleaning in the no. van. We, we, we do take it, um, we do it together. We don't one person do everything. We got to take things out of the van because last year what we didn't do is take the tins out. We thought, oh, our tins will be fine. Yes. But when we got in the van to take it on the first road trip, there they were sitting in the rack, but there's outside rust marks under the labels. So this year we'll be taking the lot out. And also, and I'll put a little inset video in now, everyone, I've noticed little tiny rust marks on the actual chrome plating of the rack itself. Mm. Again, of course, that's been encouraged, no doubt, by having the tins on oh, there. Yeah. So, yes, we'll be removing all the tin food this year. Mm -hmm. And coming to the cleaning part, we do the usual cleaning, uh, you know, wiping everything over vacuuming making sure the carpets are all nice and clean cleaning that out the cupboards but what we didn't do last year is we didn't clean the toaster we love our toast we do love our toast but those little crumbs in the bottom go a little bit moldy so just make sure you empty your toaster out or take it home and clean it when you get home don't leave crumbs in your toaster no you heard it here first so yeah of course we'll remove pretty much all the items that's the odd item that we can leave in here cleaning mm -hmm. stuff or whatever that's fine but otherwise the van will be all but empty and most importantly we'll have cleaned and dusted because at the end of the day we don't want to be attracting any rodents or anything oh definitely not into the van so we don't want any remnants of crumbs food or, or anything that, that may attract them to do so quite how they get in the van i do not know but you know they do tend to mm. i've heard rumors that they can get into vans yes. so we don't want to encourage them and put a sign outside the door basically saying free food here mm -hmm. just get everything out the van i guess is what we're saying yeah uh Another one that's important is basically leaving all the cupboard doors, drawers, and we've already said about the fridge, every compartment that has a, an opening, leaving it open. We do this simply because, and that includes the oven door, yeah. we do this simply because it aerates or it keeps the, the flow of air going around the van mm -hmm. and it just helps reduce the risk of any problems when we come back to the yeah. van. Another important thing is to move all the cushions away from the side of the van. Why do we do this? Well, of course, the side of the van, the, the panel that the cushion is in front of, that is going to be very cold. Yeah. And what tends to happen is that little bit of gap between the cushion and the panel of the van will build up moisture, okay. and then you're going to get damp. So again, to just simply allow the air to flow around your lovely van, we move all the cushions, the seat bases, we put them into the middle of the van, we put them in such a way that the air can flow around the cushions, of course. And we also lower the elevating bed, not all the way down, mm. but we lower it down, let's say, a foot or so to make sure that the airflow goes over the bed. Because, again, of course, the ceiling of the van is the closest to the outside of the van, basically. Yeah. And therefore, it's very likely that you're going to get some condensation build up. You're going to get the damp. And that lovely mattress that's on our elevating bed is not going to be looking so lovely when we come back to the van. We also go one step further and we use the step ladder that's for getting onto the elevating bed. We use that by placing it underneath the mattress again. We do that because it aids the airflow. When we leave the van like that, it basically means the air is flowing both under and over the mattress. And touch wood, last year when we did this, we had no problems whatsoever. I'm surprised Fran didn't touch there, to be honest. It's not like there's much hair stopping you, is there? <laughs> Let's move on. Right, number nine. Uh, you oh, might want me to do that one. Yes, this one's the gentleman's department. Is and it? it's batteries and making sure that uh, all the batteries, the electric batteries, the solar batteries are all sorted out before we leave the van that sounds like a lot of batteries oh yes now this of course is heavily dependent on where you keep your van it will differ if you keep your van outside your house we keep ours on the storage site as i keep saying on these videos so it's a little bit different what we do so i'll explain what we do first and i'll just put a little bit at the end about what you might want to do if you're lucky enough to have your van outside your house so for us, of course, we've got no access to plugging in any trickle charges. So we are heavily reliant on, on doing everything we can to look after the batteries in this van. And there's a few ways we can do this. For the leisure batteries, we've got solar panels. Now, OK, in autumn and winter, there's not so much sun, certainly not in the UK at least. But there is enough power going through that solar panel, even with the lack of sun in the UK during autumn and winter, to look after the leisure batteries so they are self-sufficient 
However, if you was at home, you could disconnect the leisure batteries. You could hook them up to a trickle charger. The choice is up to you. But basically, you do want to be doing something with those leisure batteries to just keep them in tip-top form, basically. As for the van battery itself, now that one's a little bit more complicated. The reason it's complicated is because I can't plug it into a trickle charger. How do I look after it? Well, there's two options. One's the slightly naughty option, and that is actually disconnect the battery completely. Now, I say naughty because if you disconnect the van battery, and incidentally, if you do disconnect the van battery on the Ducato, you can't use the central locking, of course, to lock the van, so you'll need to do the trick that's in this video to lock the passenger door because there's no other way of locking the passenger door on a Fiat Ducato if there's no power in the van. Uh, but if you do disconnect the battery, it puts it into a sort of storage state. So no matter how cold it gets outside, the battery will actually be okay because there's absolutely no drain on it whatsoever. It will degrade a little, but it will survive the winter months, providing it's in good condition before the winter months. And you'll have no issues. However, of course, there are certain risks to doing this. Number one, if you've got any kind of security fitted to the van that uses power... Well, it's no longer going to be used. It's no longer going to be working. Or if it has a backup uh, supply, that backup supply will quickly drain. And then you'll either get triggers or false alarms or, or what have you. And of course, the second thing is you are doubtless going to void your insurance policy. If for whatever reason the vehicle is taken and the security on the van wasn't working, the security that you've told them that you've got on your van, because the battery is disconnected. However, that is an option. Otherwise, of course, if the van is at home, you could just stick it on trickle charger and it'd be absolutely fine. The third option, which actually serves more than one purpose, and it's what we do because the van's in storage, is we come and periodically start the van. I would certainly not leave it more than two weeks. So why do we start the van? Well, it, it ticks a few boxes in one go. Number one, it ensures we put some charge into the battery. Now, of course, starting the van uses a lot of currents. You've got something called cold cranking amps, which is basically a heavy draw on the battery to actually turn the engine over. So there's no point running the engine for 10 minutes and thinking that that's done because you've effectively not replenished the power that you've used from the battery to get the damn thing started in the first place. So we would definitely run our van for a minimum of 30 minutes, but probably nearer 45 minutes. But whilst we're running the van, we're actually doing something else too. So we'll stick it in gear and we'll do a little drive around the storage size. Why do we do this? Well, of course, we want to rotate the tyres because we don't want to be flat spotting any of the tyres. And the third thing we will be doing is running the aircon. Now, some people may think, well, why do you need to run the aircon when it's cold? Aircon can be used whether you want it for cold air or for hot air, but more importantly, the fluid that, that basically the aircon uses contains an oil, and that oil protects the system. So you have to periodically circulate this chemical, this oil, whatever it is that's in there, to ensure that you're protecting the system. So by driving our van we don't drive it for the full 30 minutes, but by moving the van around the storage site, parking it back up and leaving the engine running, we're helping the battery. We're helping by rotating the tyres. And we're moving the aircon uh, fluid around. So basically, we're doing three things for one. That was it for the batteries. Oh. I don't know why you didn't want to do that bit. <laughs> what else should we do? I don't. What is the left? We've got to tell the viewers everything because our viewers will leave in the comments what we forget. Please do put in the comments, of course, if we forget anything because it helps other people out That's reading right. the comments below the video. Absolutely. I'll tell you what we haven't done. Yes. And we may have mentioned it in a previous video, but we, we tested it and we've realised that for us we didn't need it. Mm -hmm. Some people suggest placing moisture traps sort of mm -hmm. strategically placed in certain places around the van. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm basically saying on this video we didn't do it and we had no problems whatsoever. When we're away in our van, there's four of us in the van and at night, of course, therefore, there's four bodies generating heat and breathing. Mm -hmm. In the morning, 
because we don't have the blinds closed, we just have a, a, a silver screen or tailor-made screen, whichever make it is, can't remember, on the outside of the windscreen. There is never any condensation on the glass inside, which I think is very impressive. Mm. Well, there's no condensation on the inside because the ventilation is good. Mm. It's been designed to cope with airing the vehicle. So, by all means, if you want to treat yourself to some moisture traps, go ahead. We do not use moisture traps in our van, and we've had no problems whatsoever. Does that complete it? Yeah. I think we do. Fran says confidently yes, but she hasn't seen whether there's anything else on the next part. It's a clean sheet of paper. Ooh, we That's like it, everyone. Sheet. That's it, everyone. We did say that it'd be relatively short, and hopefully it is relatively short. More importantly, we hope you found it informative. Mm -hmm. Now, as always, we will say, if you did find it informative, hit that like button. It really does help. It tells YouTube that you liked our video, and more people should watch it. If you're not subscribed to the channel... Why not consider subscribing? You get to put up with us even more. It's absolutely free to subscribe. You can follow us on our journey by hitting that subscribe button. It's going to appear on screen any moment now. You can follow us on our journey in our van. We do lots of tips, advice, travel videos, campsite reviews. If it's to do with motorhomes, we've either done it or we're going to be doing it. And of course, we'll be doing some European trips next year. So just come along with us and see how we get on with our Roller Team motorhome van. Thank you for watching, everyone. See you soon.